Hey, what up, Backyard Ninja Kid fam? We are here to encourage, educate, and engage kids of all ages to get out and have some fun. Today, we are going to focus on the encouragement piece because the kids with confidence seem to be dominating all the obstacles. To get a little more insight on this, we asked our friend Dr. Kira Wurstein, a sports and exercise psychologist at Iowa State University, to share a little insight on how we can better, as coaches and parents and friends, encourage each other. Let's check it out. That's right, Scott. Confidence is a strong predictor of sport performance. Research shows that people with higher confidence tend to get involved in more challenging tasks, set higher goals, persist longer in the face of failure and adversity, and achieve at higher levels. They also enjoy their experience to a greater degree than those with low confidence. As you can see in the self-confidence model, there's four main predictors of confidence that we as parents and coaches can target in order to help increase confidence in an athlete or a ninja. The first, past performance accomplishments is the strongest predictor of confidence. When athletes have successful experiences, like for example, they do their first unassisted pull-up, this grows their belief in their ability to do that skill and like skills again in the future. So it's important to set athletes up for success. We don't want to have them attempt tasks that we know that they can't do right now. But instead, if they have a goal to do something that's very challenging for them, a way that we can grow their confidence in their ability to do that eventually is by breaking it down into smaller chunks that are more manageable and modified versions of that ultimate goal. It's also important to note that it's actual performance accomplishments that grows and builds confidence, not just a participation ribbon that everyone gets for showing up. The second predictor of confidence that we can target is called vicarious experience. This is when an athlete sees someone else execute or have a successful experience, make an achievement, this increases their belief that they can do it too. It's most effective when the model is like them. It's not as effective when, for example, you as the coach execute the monkey bars. They think, well, sure, you can do it, you're the coach. A better way would be if little Johnny can't do the monkey bars yet, he sees little Billy complete the monkey bars for the first time, Johnny thinks to himself, okay, if Billy can learn the monkey bars, I think I can learn too. The third predictor of confidence is verbal persuasion. The words we use are powerful. We can speak encouragement into an athlete with praise or we can discourage them with criticism. Younger athletes need more positives than older athletes. The ratios, according to research, are that youth athletes need seven positives for every one corrective feedback. Adolescents need four positives to one correction, and more elite level athletes can handle a one-to-one -one ratio. It's important to note also that when we're giving that feedback, we want to use what's called the positive sandwich approach. This is where we take some encouragement, then give our instruction, and finish with another type of encouragement. So we're sandwiching that correction, that instruction between two positives. It might sound something like this. That was great effort, Billy. On the next set, let's pump your arms to get higher off the ground. I know you can do it. The final predictor of confidence is physical and affective states, which means how we feel physically and emotionally affects our confidence. If an athlete feels really fatigued from doing lots of pull-ups, monkey bar, and rope climb, if we then ask them to try out the pegboard for the first time, they, their confidence may be a little bit lower because they're feeling physically fatigued from all of the work that they already did earlier that day. So we want to note that if we want to try a skill for the first time or if we have an important competition approaching, a way to enhance confidence is to make sure that our athletes are feeling rested and energized. So to recap, coaches and parents can have a strong influence on the confidence of athletes. We can help grow that confidence in them when we set them up for success, when we have them relive their previous successes and past accomplishments, and when we speak encouragement and praise into them. Thanks so much for having me, Scott. Wow, that was awesome. Kira, thank you so much for sharing that information. I loved hearing the ratios, how my boys need a lot more ratios than other athletes. I need to remember that because sometimes I feel like they I don't give them enough grace. So let's take that on. If you guys want to see some other videos on how we encourage, educate, and engage kids of all ages, make sure you smash that subscribe button. Hit this like button if you liked it. Don't forget to share this video with other coaches. 
It's important. Let's get out there, encourage each other, and have some fun. See ya!